Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, greetings and a very warm welcome to this evening's worship service. Let us begin our worship in the name of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I greet each one of you and I welcome every one of you who are joining us live this evening. It is such a joy, privilege and honor for you to be here with us to participate in this worship service. On behalf of Our Christ Ministry, myself and my family, I would like to welcome each one of you who are watching this and may God continue to bless you with rich blessings. Each year, different aspects, different theological examples, different churches, different languages, different understandings, different theological examples, different preachers from various work backgrounds and study backgrounds. We come to listen to the seven words on the cross and the word of God. And today is also a day where we will be listening to the seven words on the cross and also meditate on the word of God for today. Today's theme is the crucifixion of Jesus and his death at Calvary. It is such a joy, privilege and honor for us to have seven preachers with us and three musician, musical teams with us this evening joining us live. And friends, as we celebrate today the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, as we celebrate and embark this day as Good Friday, on this Good Friday, may you find the strength in the sacrifice of Jesus and may his love guide you in all your endeavors. May God bless each one of you on behalf of our Christ ministry, myself and my family. I would like to wish each one of you a blessed Good Friday 2024. Dear friends, on behalf of each one of you, and on behalf of For Christ Ministry, I would also like to welcome all our preachers and musicians who are here with us this evening. In spite of your busy schedules, you are here with us this evening. I would like to welcome each one of you for being a part of this worship service. Dear friends, it's such a joy, privilege and honor for us to be here this evening. Before we start through, I would like to once again let you know the list of uh, preachers and the list of singers who are joining us this evening. It is such a joy, privilege and honor for us to have Mrs. Elizabeth Welfare, Evangelist, Mrs. Mercy John Peter, she is the Secretary of the Women's Fellowship, Karnataka Central Diocese, Church of South India and teacher at Bishop Cotton Girls School, Bangalore. Mrs. Davin Elena, Fellowship Ministerial Assistance, Karnataka Central Diocese, Church of South India and teacher at Bishop Cotton Boys School, Bangalore. Brother Isaac Mark, Evangelist and Founder of Decode Ministries. Brother John Griff, Evangelist, Author and President of John Griff International, JGI. Sister Pooja Meena, Evangelist and Lecturer at Goodwill's Girls PU College, Bangalore. The list of singers are Bishop Cotton Boys School Music Department from Bangalore, the Samuel Brothers team from Chennai, Sister Sharon from Chennai. It is such a joy, privilege and honor for so many of them who have come here this evening to share the word, also to render wonderful performances through the music. It is always a joy, privilege and honor for us to have these people who are here with us this evening. Age doesn't matter, but sharing the will of God matters. Dear friends, before we start through, before we start into a time of meditation, let us have a time of worship. Let us all cleanse our hearts, clean our minds and stay calm for a time and go into the time of meditation on the seven words on the cross. 
Dear friends, right now we will be having a special performance, special musical performance. We are indeed privileged and honored to have the Bishop Cotton Boys School Music Department from Bangalore joining us this evening. Eight members in total, the entire music department of Bishop Cotton is here with us this evening. And dear friends, to be noted, Bishop Cotton Boys School is the place where I have done my 14 years of schooling and they are really a great support for my ministry and my personal life. I would like to introduce and welcome the team members, all the, the entire team. We are indeed privileged and honored to have Miss Gabriela Tanishta. She is the, she's an international singer and choir director at Bishop Cotton Boys School, Bangalore. We are also indeed privileged and honored to have Mr. R. Samuel Vijay Kumar. He is the head of department of music, Bishop Cotton Boys School. He is also a versatile musician and plays organ at different churches across Bangalore. The following teammates are Mr. Thiru Kumaran. Mr. Timothy, Mr. Faustin, Mr. Avinash, Mr. Sam, Mr. Samson. It is such a joy, privilege and honor for us to have these eight members, the entire Bishop Cotton Boys School Music Department joining us live on behalf of For Christ Ministry, myself and my family. I would like to welcome the entire department for being with us this evening and I request you to kindly present your performance. Thank you, Brother Nikhil, for inviting us to your channel and giving us the opportunity to share the word of God for Christ, with Christ, in Christ.
to be having heard by these great musicians and singers with us this evening it is such a joy privilege and honor that the entire department of the bishop cotton boys school the music department is joining us and in spite of your busy schedules you are here with us this evening to participate in this worship service and to bring out the gospel and to the message of this evening to the people out there and it is such a joy privilege and honor for each one of you to be here this evening on behalf of our christ ministry myself and my family i would like to thank you so much for being with us this evening and also you have accepted our invitation in spite of the busy schedules you had thank you so much dear friends each year when we listen to the word of god it may be the same words but different understanding by different people when we take time to listen to this seven words on the cross let us prepare ourselves and move on into the time of meditation this evening it is a time where we will be going into the seven words on the cross by seven different preachers from seven different world backgrounds it is such a joy privilege and honor for me to introduce and welcome the preachers for the words firstly i would like to introduce and welcome the preacher for the first word on the cross the word of forgiveness father forgive them for they know not what they do it is such a joy privilege and honor for us to have mrs elizabeth welfare we do not need any introduction about ma'am because she's a familiar face in my ministry a very dedicated person in the field of ministry as an evangelist i would like to introduce ma'am to you ma'am is a person who has dedicated her entire life to share the word ma'am travels to different parts of india for her ministry and mainly her ministry is in village areas where she is trying to reach out as many people as possible in many languages for the past 9 years ma'am has dedicated her entire life to share the word and never misses a chance to be uh, to share a word when called till now i have invited ma'am for the christmas and last year good friday video she has always been there as a great support for my ministry and also a great role model for me and has never told me a no not possible ma'am has never told me that ma'am has always told i will be there and in spite of ma'am's busy schedule the couple of weeks ma'am is still here with us this evening on behalf of our christ ministry myself and my family i would like to welcome you ma'am for being with us this evening and i request you to kindly share the first word on the cross the word of forgiveness greetings to you in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ i thank the lord for giving me an opportunity to share the word i also thank nikhil the last words of a dying person is always very important people often collect and remember the last words of a person because those words become very personal whenever we go for a funeral the first thing we ask to the loved one of the dead person is what was his or her last words because these words are very important and they are very significant and also they impact others in the same way the last words of jesus were very important and they these words were the greatest words as someone said the last words of jesus are like windows that we can look through and see the very heart of god and someone also said each of the sayings of jesus is an ocean of truth compressed into a drop of speech my dear friends no man has ever spoken like jesus 
Now, these words, what Jesus spoke was very significant because Jesus spoke them. He spoke them from the cross of Calvary when he was suffering and all the words or the sayings what we spoke were seven and seven denotes completion. Now, crucifixion was a horrible deed. The Romans did not invent crucifixion, the ancient Persians did. And they believed that the earth was sacred and if a person has to be executed, he shouldn't be touching the ground. So they devised a means by which the victim should be raised up above the ground and then killed. And this is how crucifixion came into being and there was no death more cruel than this. Jesus was an innocent man. They beat him, they whipped him, they placed the crown of thorns on his head, they spat on his face, they pulled his beard, they jeered at him. Then they put the cross on him to carry. Because of the weight, he fell down. Then they seized Simon and made him carry the cross. And on the place called Calvary, Jesus was crucified. Large nails were driven into his wrists. The feet was overlapped and a large nail was driven into. He was hanging on the cross with a piece of cloth. According to history, the idea behind crucifixion was that it delayed the death. And the victim went through the maximum amount of pain and torture. And the victim could last for days before he died. Now, Jesus was on the cross for six hours from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. And during these six hours, he spoke or he made all the seven statements. And the first one was, we see in Luke chapter 23, verse 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The first saying of Jesus was, the prayer of forgiveness. Now here we can see after they crucified Jesus, he spoke the first statement. Now, what is a natural reaction when we are attacked? Can we pray for somebody or can we bless that person? But what did Jesus do? He prayed for them. But what is our reaction? Our reaction will be, Lord, judge them. Here, we can see that Jesus prayed for them. Now, we can see that prayer was his nature. Whatever he did, he first took time to be alone with his father and to talk to him. Now, even in that painful situation, he's not praying for himself, but he's praying for others. He's not praying to his father in order to deliver him from this situation, but he's telling his father to forgive them. The hands that were nailed, the hands that were nailed and were healing so many people and the feet that walked across many, many, many places, though it was nailed, what happened? He prayed. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear friends, what is our reaction when somebody attacks us? Can we pray for them? Can we bless them? But what did Jesus do? He prayed for them. But what do we do? We curse them in anger. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take the example of Jesus and pray for, those, for all of them, for those people who attack us. Verse 34 says, Jesus said, Father. Jesus is addressing his father. He had an unhindered relationship with his father. When he's going through this pain, when he's going through this agony, he's calling out his father. What do we do? When we go through struggles in life, when we go through pain in life, when we go through different situations in life, what do we do? We always doubt him. We don't take time to pray. We don't take time to do anything. We don't take time to talk to God. 
But what did Jesus do when he was going through this painful situation, when he was going through this agony? What did he do? He called out his father. Let us remember, no matter how heavy our burden is, how deep our pain is, or how low the valley is, we can call on to our father. Now, what did Jesus pray for? Verse 34, it says, forgive them. Now, what, who is this them? Them refers to the Roman soldiers and to the people who were mocking and jeering and doing things, torturing him. He's, he's asking his father to forgive all those people. My dear brothers and sisters, when you see so much of torture, those people, all those Roman soldiers and everybody gave it to him. But what, did he, what is he asking his father to do? He's asking his father to forgive them. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear friends, can we forgive the people who hurt us? I know it is very difficult. But what did Jesus do? Though he was going through that pain, he forgave everybody and he told his father, Father, forgive them. Can we forgive the people who has hurt us? Just remember all the people who have hurt you. Don't carry that bitterness into your, inside your heart. But right now, release them. Release them. And tell the Lord, Lord, I forgive them. I know it is very hard. But let us take the example of Jesus. How Jesus forgave all the people who hurt him. Let us forgive everybody who has hurt us. Next, why did Jesus pray? First one, to fulfill the scriptures. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12 says, Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he has poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. My dear friends, Jesus prayed in order to fulfill the scriptures. Next, whatever he preached, he practiced. We can see that in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Here, Jesus is practicing what he preached. Jesus told us to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. And he told us and he is doing it in action. Many a times we tell many things, but are we doing it in action? My dear brothers and sisters and my dear friends, what do we, we say? Let us do it in action. We might preach so many things, but are we practicing it? The third one was, prayer was his nature. He prayed every time. In his ministry, he always took time to be alone with his father. Whatever he did, before he did anything, he prayed. He spoke to his father. The fourth one is, forgiveness is the greatest need of humanity. Our greatest need is not a costly car or a big house, but our greatest need right now is forgiveness. My dear friends, cross is all about forgiveness. And unless and until our sins are forgiven, we cannot forgive others. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. So let us ask the Lord to forgive all our shortcomings, whatever we have done. Let us ask the Lord, Lord, forgive all my shortcomings so that we can forgive others. And to be like Christ, kind and compassionate, forgiving each other as Christ is forgiving, we also should forgive others. Now, again, that verse 34 says, for they do not know what they are doing. Now, when we consider the word for, for is the reason behind his, his prayer. For is the reason behind his prayer. Why should God forgive them? Because they were ignorant. We can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. 
None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. For the Roman soldiers, they did not know the identity of Jesus. It was their job and they had, they had crucified thousands of people. But for the rest of the crowd, that they did not know how serious the crime was they committed. Though they committed such a great crime, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, this sinless man, Jesus, forgave them. This prayer reminds us that there is no sin too great for God to forgive us. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, you might be thinking, my life is so wicked. I, I've led a wretched life. Can God forgive me? I don't think God can forgive me. My sin is too big. I want to tell you, my dear friend, however your life is, however wicked your life is, however wretched your life is, the blood of Jesus can forgive all our sins. Because he is our God who cru was crucified. And what did he tell? He told them, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. However big your sin is, However, you might be thinking, no, I've committed such a big crime. No, God cannot forgive me. You are wrong, my dear friend. The blood of Jesus can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus will cleanse every sin of us. Now, next, we have a question. Did God answer Jesus' prayer? The answer is, yes, he did. Because one of the thieves... He repented on the cross. And what did Jesus tell him? I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. And then when Jesus was dying, what happened? Darkness came over. The whole land and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And one of the centurion seeing this, what did he say? Surely this was a righteous man. Then at the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached the gospel, what happened? 3,000 people were added to the group. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear friends, Jesus can forgive all our sins and give us a great hope. As how Jesus had an uninterrupted relationship with his father. Do we have that relationship when we go through or when somebody attack us, what do we do? Can we pray for them? Here, Jesus had an uninterrupted relationship and when he was going through all this pain, he called upon the name of his father. He called his father. Can we call upon the name of Jesus when we are going through problems or do we question him? Or do we sit in one side and tell, no, I don't want to pray. I don't want to call on to God. My dear friend, whenever we go through different struggles in life, call on to the name of our God. Call on to the name of the Father. Now, though Jesus was a sinless man, the people tortured him. And he went through a lot of pain. So much of your agony. So much of pain he went through. But what did he tell his father. Father, forgive them. My dear friends, can we forgive the people who have hurt us? They don't carry the bitterness. Right now, give away the bitterness, throw away the bitterness and forgive all the people who have hurt. And when, let us release everything, all that bitterness as how Jesus, when he went through this pain, when he, though he was an innocent man, he went through this pain, though he didn't do anything. When he, he forgave all those people who hurt him in the same way, whoever it is, let us tell the Lord, Lord, I forgive them. And my dear friends, in order to forgive them, we need to experience forgiveness ourselves. We need to experience that forgiveness. So let us ask the Lord, Lord, forgive all my sins. Forgive all our sins. However worst and wicked it is, 
The blood of Jesus can cleanse us and he is God who can forgive us. For that, what do we need to do? We need to tell him, Lord, I have sinned against you and against others. I am not worthy, but come in, come into my heart and you, and you make me your child. When we do, when we tell that, Jesus makes us his child and he comes into our heart. Now, when Jesus comes into our heart, we do not have to live with the guilt of sin, but with the new heart. So my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, let this Good Friday, let it be that we repent all our sins and experience forgiveness. For there is no greater sin that Jesus cannot forgive. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. God bless. Dear friends, it was such a joy, privilege and honor for us to be have ministered by Mrs. Elizabeth Nam. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your understanding, theological understanding on the first word on the cross. In spite of your busy schedules, you are here with us this evening. And thank you so much once again for all the support towards my ministry and for this For Christ ministry. Always you are in our prayers. We thank you so much on behalf of For Christ Ministry, myself and my family. I would like to thank you for being with us this evening and to share the first word on the cross. Dear friends, as we move on to the second word on the cross, it is such a joy, privilege and honor for me to introduce and welcome the preacher for the second word on the cross, the word of salvation. Truly, I say to you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. It is such a joy, privilege and honor for me to welcome Mrs. Mercy John Peter, the Secretary of the Women's Fellowship, Karnataka Central Diocese, Church of South India and teacher at Bishop Cotton Girls School, Bangalore. In spite of Amma's busy schedules, at church and in school. As soon as I requested Amma to share the word, Amma gracefully accepted our invitation which was extended on behalf of For Christ Ministry. And Amma is here with us this evening on behalf of For Christ Ministry, myself and my family. I would like to welcome you, Mercy Amma, for being with us this evening. And I request you to kindly share the word the second word on the cross, the word of salvation. Greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The second word from the cross, forgiveness and promise of paradise. We read in Luke chapter 23 verse 43. And he said to him, truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. One of the criminals said to Jesus, Keep me in mind when you come in your kingdom. For which Jesus says, You will be with me in paradise today. One more year to remember and meditate upon the seven words Jesus Christ spoke on the cross. This is not a day of mourning or a day to show our sympathy to Jesus. We read in Luke chapter 23, verse 28 and 31. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourself and for your children. Verse 31. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? The second word Jesus uttered from cross. This Jesus said in response to the request, the plea made by one of the criminal hanging on the cross. What a wonderful promise Jesus gives the believing thief, presence with the Christ in paradise. What was the criminal's prayer? How was it? Here we see he made a right petition. We learn that he had a correct view of reality. 
verse 40 and 41. A correct view of himself, he saw himself as a criminal who was rightly condemned for his deeds. He correctly realized that he deserved death. He knew he was a sinner and Jesus was innocent. At that time, he made a correct decision. He made a right petition. He made a right petition at a right time. Though, we, though he was sentenced to death and he was hanging to life by a thread, he believed that his soul would continue to live after he died. So he had to make a correct decision and he made a right petition at the right time. And he made the petition at the right time to the right person. We see that this criminal had a correct view of salvation. Verse 42. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Verse 42. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He saw himself as totally helpless. Here we see that this criminal had the correct view of salvation. He could do nothing to improve his odds in life or save himself. He was now bound to death and could not escape. Yet he cries out to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He knew that Jesus was going to come back again to take us. He knew he had the correct view of salvation. The reward he got for looking at Jesus and making the right request at right time to the right person, Jesus, is a place in paradise. How are we? Are we doing the right petition at the right time to the right person? Has this criminal who did the right thing and he looked up to Jesus, he knew that Jesus was going to come back and the blessing what he got was a place in paradise with Jesus. The blessing the converted thief received for his changed heart, a place in paradise. When we meditate upon the second word uttered by Jesus on the cross, we are reminded that we should look at Jesus. Whatever situations we may be in, whatever difficulties we may be facing, even if we are like the criminal hanging on the cross, we have to look at Jesus. It is not only looking at Jesus. When we look at Jesus, we need to change ourselves, convert ourselves and confess to Jesus whatever wrong doings we have done. When we look at Jesus, when we convert and confess to Jesus, we will receive the blessing of living with Jesus in paradise. It's never too late to change. The thief on the cross made the decision to accept Jesus right before his death. Despite, despite his wrongdoings, despite his crimes, mistakes, Jesus accepted him. We must embrace humility. The impenitent thief wasn't open to believing in Jesus and joined in jeering at him. When we see others in the same state today, we must pray for them. We will be with Jesus when we believe in him. Christ's proclamation to the thief on the cross saying, Today you will be with me in paradise is incredible and affirms that no matter what we, no matter what, we can have forgiveness and be with Jesus after death. For that, firstly, we need to look at him, change ourselves, confess to him. Only then we get the forgiveness as the criminal got. We have to carry this message of forgiveness and blessing we receive for our changed heart to the world and proclaim this love of Jesus Christ to the unreached people of the world. That is the reason God has blessed us with one more year to meditate the words of Jesus Christ from the cross. It is our duty to carry this love of Jesus Christ to the world. Jesus remembered that thief 
and Jesus remembers us. The thief didn't do anything to deserve the love of God or to be with Jesus in paradise. Nothing. The thief was a broken, dishonest, crucified sinner. But Jesus was tripping with grace from the cross. It was pure and powerful grace. We don't deserve the grace of Jesus, but we are reminded today we will be with Jesus in paradise and that's what happens when we follow Jesus. When we follow Jesus, we, we, we overflow with love for the world so that we can bring the paradise of the divine love of God to all people. In this Lenten season, when we are benocked to kneel our hearts at the cross of Christ, maybe it is important. Maybe we need to learn from the thief and echo his cry of Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Maybe we need to cry out, Jesus, Savior, help us to make a paradise on earth where no one is hurt, no one is hungry, no one is alone, no one is hated. So, in this Lenten season, let us, like the criminal, make a right decision, right petition, at a right time, to the right person, so that we get the blessing of living with Jesus in the paradise. God bless you. Amen. What a joy, privilege and honor it was for us to be, have meditated on the second word on the cross. And uh, it was also an honor for us to be have ministered by Mrs. Mercy John Peter. Thank you so much, Mercy Amma, for being with us this evening. In spite of your busy schedules, your commitment for the ministry is always your top priority. And in spite of all the hectic works that you are having, you are here with us and you gracefully accepted our invitation. On behalf of For Christ Ministry, myself and my family, I would like to thank you so much for being with us this evening and to share the second word on the cross. Dear friends, as we move on to the Next word, it is such a joy, privilege and honor for me to introduce and welcome the preacher for the third word on the cross, the word of affection. Women, behold your son. It is such a joy, privilege and honor for me to introduce Mrs. Davin Elena, Fellowship Ministerial Assistant, Karnataka Central Diocese, Church of South India and teacher at Bishop Cotton boys school bangalore it is always a joy that ma'am is here with us this evening in spite of your busy schedules at church and in school ma'am we have gracefully accepted our invitation and you are here with us this evening on behalf of for christ ministry myself and my family i would like to welcome you and i request you to kindly share the word the third word on the cross the word of affection Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we always seek to hear a word from you. Your word is important for us in a world today where there is so much information but not very much wisdom. We seek to hear a word from you. We want to have a biblical point of view based on the authority of the word. Thank you for this touching verse given to us through the gospel of St. John. Today we open our hearts to you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us meditate on the third word on the cross, the word of affection. Women, behold your son. So Jesus saying his mother, the disciple whom he loved, standing there, said to his mother, Women, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his family. Here, we can see Jesus 
address this mother as women. The address may sound disrespectful in English but not in Greek. Women was in fact a highly respectful and affectionate word of address. A symbolic meaning can be drawn from Jesus' word, Behold your son. Establishing the family of God was at the heart of Christ's mission and ministry. Through relationship with Jesus Christ, be his disciples become member of his family. We need to love each other and be his good servants of God. Here, in this world, there is nothing more personal than family. Their joys, their success, paints our life with great pride. We can't wait to tell other people about that. And at the same time, our family's failures, problems can overwhelm us with pain and distress. Turning for family is complicated, isn't it? Scripture tells us that we are supposed to show infinite love and care for them. As we can see the example, the stories of prodigal son and also instructions from the letters of the Apostle Paul and the other apostles care for the family. But we are also supposed to show wise discipline and raising our children responsibly as a family. But it's not just caring for our children. Some of us are trying to show care for our aging parents. Some of us, then they need attentive love and how do those same difficult principles of caring for the family apply. Firstly, Jesus' willingness to care for you and me. We can see three reasons that this word of Jesus to his mother and to the beloved disciples is the tremendous encouragement to our faith. The first reason is, is Jesus was so eager to care for his mother in her hour of need, how much more is he eager to care for his disciples who hear the word of God today and do it. If he love his mother with a natural affection, how much more care can his obedience back on his love? We know this by reading Luke Gospel chapter 8 verses 21. Secondly, Jesus' ability to take care of us. The second reason that this word to Jesus provide for the needs of his own in a moment of his deepest deepest weakness and humiliation how much more can he provide for our needs in his presence power and exaltation in philippians chapter 4 verses 19 he says my god shall supply all your needs according to his righteous in glory in christ jesus and lastly the love of a son for his mother what does it this word from the cross teach us as we reflect on the third word from the cross we can see the extent of jesus love here here is dying in the agony gasping for each breath and he sees his mother the one who comforts him through all of his childhood curse and bruises, teases and taunts, 
when he was a boy he would run home to his mother and instantly wrapped her with her protective comforting mother's love for his own welfare jesus is thinking about his mother what are we as his disciples to learn from this third word from the cross love for our family and responsibility for our family no matter what we need to love our family we are responsible for our family obligations jesus was clear that his disciples can put commitment to him about family relationships so sometimes even using hyperbola to drive him point home our ability to christ become primary and obedience to parents become secondary just because we are christians doesn't mean that we are absolved of family obligation the apostle paul is adamant if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family he has denied his faith and he is worse than an unbeliever as we read this in 1 timothy chapter 5 verses 8 we need to love our our god and families and we need to do the god's work when we care for our family we please god we who gave us our family either what your family and our family needs most from us today it is very complicated we don't know what our family needs sometimes they just need tough love sometimes they just need compassionate love and tender acceptance but jesus is teaching us in a moment even we need to pray for our family care for our family be with our family love our family we don't know what they need but we need to care for them and love them as jesus said are we loving our family are we caring our family are we forgiving their sins let us examine our heart even though jesus and john have been close friends john records the story many years later he was a the word disciple referred himself first and foremost john was jesus disciple his followers his loving disciple and then jesus said care for this women as your mother scripture records john blink an eye he says he took her from their day forward he fulfilled what jesus asked him to do as john we need to serve and obey our god we need to be a good disciple of lord jesus christ and we need to follow the example of our lord and savior jesus christ hallelujah let us pray heavenly father we commit each and every one to your mighty hand you be with us lead us master you are the one who teaches us in jesus mighty name we pray amen what a joy privilege and honor for us to be having meditated on the third word on the cross and it was an honor for us to be having ministered by mrs davin elena thank you so much ma'am in spite of your busy schedules you are here with us this evening on behalf of our christ ministry myself and my family i would like to thank you so much for being with us this evening and also to lead us in the meditation of the third word on the cross dear friends as we move on to the next word it is my indeed joy privilege and honor for me to introduce and welcome the preacher for the fourth word on the cross the word of anguish 
my god my god why have you forsaken me it is such a joy privilege and honor for me to introduce brother isaac mark evangelist and founder of decode ministries brother isaac is the founder of decode ministries in bangalore he started his full time ministry in the year 2022 he has been serving in various ministries such as cmi which stands for church multiplication institute which mainly focuses on evangelism discipleship and multiplication brother isaac has also led the east and the northeast teams of cmi and also trains pastors on evangelism and discipleship brother recently got married and as a couple they have started this for decode ministries in the year 2022 which mainly focuses on the youth teaching them and discipling them focusing on the relationship with the lord they have also have their life group which happens every sunday at their place it is such a joy privilege and honor for us to have brother isaac mark the founder of decode ministries with us Uh, in spite of brother's busy schedules traveling to mumbai continuously the past week he is here with us this evening on behalf of for christ ministry myself and my family i would like to welcome you brother and for being with us this evening and i request you to kindly share the fourth word on the cross the word of anguish Praise the Lord everyone I bring uh, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior to everybody watching this video uh, I'm Isaiah I'm from Bangalore and uh, I'm a full time ministry I want to thank uh, brother Nikhil and uh, for Christ Ministries for giving me this opportunity and uh, what I'm going to be sharing today is about the fourth word on the cross the word of agony where Jesus said my god my god why have thou forsaken me I think all of you would have uh, heard the first three words on the cross which is father forgive them for they know not what they do and uh, you know he looks at the thief on the cross and he says you will be with me in paradise and he looks at Mary and says behold your son and looks at John and says behold your mother and I'm going to be sharing the fourth word and we have three words uh, after this why have thou forsaken me my god my god why have thou forsaken me You know all the seven words of Jesus on the cross is crucial but this word is more personal. You know this word can bring back the essence of what happened on the cross of Calvary the suffering that Jesus had to go through on that cross of Calvary when he was uh, a sin offering for our sin. You know most of the time we just think about the physical suffering the physical pain that Jesus had to go through uh, on the cross. Of course he was beaten so many times uh he shed every single drop of his blood and you know he had to carry the heavy cross and there were nails on his hand the crown of thorns on his head and a lot of struggle physically but we mostly most of the time ignore the mental and the emotional pain that Jesus had to go through on that cross you know the emotional pain or the mental pain that Jesus had while he was sharing this word while he was speaking this word as a word of agony as he looks at the father and he says my god my god why have thou forsaken me you know why did jesus say this and what exactly happened why did the father had to forsake the son you know father and son have always been connected in the spirit but at that moment when jesus had to carry the cr- the cross the weight of our sin when jesus was being poured out as a sin offering for us father had to turn away from jesus because god is holy He is so righteous that he cannot look at sin. You know, father and son have been eternally connected in the spirit, but because of our sin as he was being poured out as a sin offering on that cross, father had to forsake Jesus. You know, father abandoned Jesus on the cross of Calvary so you and I will not be abandoned. Father forsook Jesus so you and I will not be forsaken. You know the punishment that all of us had to go through Jesus took that on that cross. He took all of our sins on that cross because God is just and God is righteous and he was pouring out his wrath on Jesus. He could not look at him and he had to forsake him. And this was the emotional pain that Jesus went through. 
You know, and the, we see this uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus praying, as he was praying, he sweats out blood. There was so much of agony and he says, Father, can this cup be taken out? Yet not my will, but yours be done. But here it's again a word of agony because he was disconnected for a while from the Father with whom he was eternally connected. And when, it, when I sometimes think, why did this have to happen? Why did this entire scene have to happen? I just think about how much God wanted to save mankind. You know, how much God wanted to redeem mankind from the sin that we put ourselves into. All of us walk towards destruction because of the sins we've committed in life. But God being just wants to, wants to suffice his wrath. But there's no man on earth who can, who's worthy of shedding his blood to suffice the anger of God. And that's why God sent his only son, Jesus Christ. With whom he was eternally connected, he chose to separate himself to redeem us mankind. What does this show us? What does this teach us? Two things. One, it shows the love of God. You know, God loved mankind so much that he wanted a relationship with him. From the beginning in the book of Genesis, we see God wanted a fellowship, a relationship with mankind. And that's why the Bible says in the cool of the day, Jesus used to walk and talk to them. That was a relationship that God wanted with mankind, but because of sin, it got disconnected. God from the beginning has so much of love on mankind, but because of the disconnection and he, God could not reconcile with man because of the sin that he committed. But his love was showed when he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross of Calvary. So we will be reconciled with him. It shows the love of Jesus that he willfully went on the cross, knowing everything that was going to happen to him. Knowing what kind of suffering he was going to go through. Knowing what kind of separation he has to go through with the father because of our sin. Knowing what kind of pain, emotional and physical and mental, every pain that he, he knew he was going to take it up. But he still willfully went on that cross because he loves us so much. And he wants to call us and draw us close to his love. He wants to pour out his love. And the only way he, he could demonstrate his love is by giving himself. You know, today's world demands love to just receive but God is love the word says God is love and he shows love by giving he gave his only son and he never hesitated to separate from him from him just so that you and I will not be separated the second thing we learn from this passage where we see Jesus disconnecting from the father for a while is the sacrifice that Jesus had to make you know he had to like 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 I said he had to pour himself out every single drop of his blood Today we give a lot of sacrifices, we try to do a lot of good deeds and we think those are sacrifices for us. You know, we Christians sometimes sacrifice non-witch during uh, Lent and we think it's a favor for God. We, do, we try to do a lot of good deeds, but if you ever think of the sacrifice that Jesus did on that cross of Calvary, I think our lives would never be the same. We will start connecting to him. Right? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? So much of agony, so much of pain separating from the father but why did he do that because he loves us so much and he sacrificed what do we do what do we learn from this we learn that god had to go through so much just so that you and i can be restored and put back to life just so that we can eternally connect with god and live with him eternally just so that our lives will not be messed up here on earth but we will walk with god just so that our lives will be blessed and we will walk in the purpose and plan that God has for us. And today, though Christ had to go through so much, he had to be forsaken by the Father. What are we doing? We, we forsake Christ. You know, I once said a quote which said, when Father looks at Jesus, he looks at Jesus as if it were us. And when he looks at us, he looks at us as if we were Jesus. The perfect blood of Jesus has forgiven us. The perfect blood of the Lamb has forgiven us. The spot, spotless blood of Jesus has washed our sins. And when Father has to look at us, mankind, who were once in our sin, He looks at us as if we were perfect because we are washed by the blood of Jesus. And when Christ is looked by the Father, He looks at Him as if Christ had committed all the sins that we did. On the cross, when Jesus had to take the weight of our sin, it says, if you read the passage, a few verses, uh, you know, in, in Matthew chapter 27, it says the darkness fell upon the place as Christ was carrying the sin of the world. He had to be disconnected. 
because he loves us, because he sacrificed himself. And this is a call for us to worship him. This is a call for us to believe in him. This is a call for us to forsake the world and not Christ. Right? This is a call for us to come back to Jesus, understanding his love, understanding what he did for us, understanding how much he wants to have a relationship with God, with us. You know, you read Psalm chapter 8, verse 1, it says, The God who created the sun, moon, and stars, the psalmist asked the Lord, What is man that you're so mindful of him? John chapter 15 talks about our fellowship with God, that we can never bear fruit without us being connected to God. God's love was poured out on us. How are we going to respond back to it? And all of us take Lent as a practice. We try to leave certain bad habits just for those 40 days. We try to sacrifice a lot of things. But I want to urge you, brothers and sisters, watching this video. Jesus went through all of this for you because you are precious. Jesus does not want us to be a religious Christian. Jesus does not want us to be a traditional Christian. He wants us to understand what he went through because our lives need to be transformed by walking with him. Let's not follow anything as a ritual, as a practice, but try to make a change in your life this Good Friday. Try to make a change in your life this Easter. I don't know what practices you've been following for the last 40 days, but let it become a lifestyle and not just a practice for these 40 days of your life. Come back to Jesus because he went through so much for us. The fourth word, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Father forsook Jesus, so we will not be forsaken. He was abandoned, so we will not be abandoned. He was punished and judged so that we will not be punished and judged. Because we are not worthy of, of getting our own salvation. We are not worthy of paving our way to God's holiness. Jesus had to create a way for our holiness. And he says he is the way. So let's remember what Christ did on that cross of Calvary. And let's connect with him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the pain that you went through. Mentally, physically, emotionally just so that we will be connected back to you. We will be reconciled. We will be washed by the precious blood and we will walk with you in the fullness of the plan that you have for us. God, I pray that every person watching this video, their lives will change and will never again be the same or master. That we will understand the love and sacrifice that you did for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. What a joy, privilege and honor it was for us to be having meditated on the fourth word on the cross and also to be ministered by Brother Isaac Mark. Thank you so much, Brother. In spite of your busy schedules, you have accepted our invitation, which was extended from For Christ Ministry and for being with us this evening. And also, may God lead you and use you in the ministry that you are leading in as couples. Uh, brother and sister, I wish you the very best for the successful ministry that you are going to take place in discipling young people to be great witness and disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, we have come across the first four words and more few words then we'll be leading to the word of God. Before that, before we start into our meditation on the fifth word on the cross, we have a special performance here with us this evening. We are indeed privileged and honored to have the Samuel Brothers team from Chennai with us this evening. The team consists of three members and all three are brothers. Uh, <clears throat> Brother Joel Samuel, he is a philosophy graduate and also is pursuing his Bachelor of Divinity and has served in churches like uh, churches in the Madras Diocese, Church of South India. We are in, indeed privileged and honored to have Brother Jovin Sam. He is an MCOM graduate and Brother Joanne Paul. He is an MBA HR graduate. All three are blessed with a wonderful voice, God's gift and talented singers. And they are also having their own YouTube channel, Instagram accounts, where they are sharing the word, the message through music. 
and wonderful people and they are also a part of lot of choirs in and across chennai on behalf of for christ ministry myself and my family i would like to welcome the samuel brothers who are here with us this evening and i request them to take over the stage and to perform their special performance We are a band of Christian soldiers fighting Satan every day. We're standing up for Jesus while we kneel in down to pray. If His precious blood has cleansed you and washed away your sin, that makes you a member of the blood-washed band. Praise God, I'm a member of the blood-washed band. I've been washed in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. I was bound by chains of sin to one day the Master came and made me a member of the blood washed band. God's children are advancing, marching till we reach the goal. For the battle's almost over, you will soon be going home. I can hear the band of angels as the saints go marching in. Praises to the captain of the blood-washed band. Praise God, I'm a member of the blood-washed band. I've been washed in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. I was bound by chains of sin to one day the Master came and made me a member of the blood wash band. Praise God, I'm a member of the blood wash band. I've been washed in the soul cleansing blood of the land. I was bound by chains of sin to one day the Master came. One day the Master made me a member of the blood wash band. Life is like a mountain railroad With an engine that's brave We must make the run successful From the cradle to the grave Watch the curves, the fills, the tunnels Never fall to never fail Keep your hand upon the throttle And your eye upon the rail Blessed Savior, Thou will guide us Till we reach that blissful shore Where the angels wait to join us In thy praise, in thy praise Forevermore, forevermore As you roll across the trestle Spelling Jordan, swelling tide, you behold the Union Depot, into which your train will glide. There you meet the superintendent, God the Father, God the Son. With a hearty joy exploded, we repeat, grand welcome home. Blessed Savior, Thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us. In thy praise, in thy praise, forevermore, forevermore. 
what a joy privilege and honor for us to be having heard by the young people performing for us uh, the brothers the samuel brothers from chennai thank you so much brothers for joining us and for being a great part in this worship service you are here with us this evening it is such a joy privilege and honor for us to be having you on behalf of for christ ministry myself and my family i would like to thank you so much for rendering such a beautiful performance and as you lead this by sharing the word through music may you all find the eternal peace through music dear friends as we move on to the word as we come back into the meditation on the the seven words on the cross it is my indeed privilege and honor for me to introduce and welcome the preacher for the fifth word on the cross the word of suffering i thirst it is my indeed privilege and honor for me to introduce brother john griffith evangelist author and president of john griffith international brother john is working as, as an aerospace engineer he is also an author and the second book unveil your purpose has become the number one new release in amazon in the year 2023 and his podcast fuel for the soul with john griff recently completed 1000 podcast and regularly ranking among the top christian podcasts brothers in spite of his busy schedules at work and uh, in his ministry he is here with us this evening and also today he is preaching in one more church in the morning and um, it is such a joy privilege and honor for us to have brother john with us this evening on behalf of for christ ministry myself and my family i would like to welcome you brother and i request you to kindly share the fifth word on the cross the word of suffering hey thank you so much brother nickel solomon george for having me and it's wonderful to see all that you do in your ministry for christ ministries and i just want to just pray and decree and declare that the lord who began the work in your life and in the ministry that he has birthed through you it's going to come out victorious and you're going to reach many many souls for the glory of god as well it's such a joy for me to be with each one of you watching listening from across the globe and i just want to just challenge each one of you with this word that you know the lord has been putting in my heart with regard to this year that you know what the lord we serve is a god who has not led us to just be hanging on a cliff but he has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us and today i want you to understand that even if you are stepping into good friday you may have different emotions and feelings and saying oh my goodness already 3 months of this year is done i don't know what's in store for me i don't know what's going to happen in my life i want you to stay tuned because i believe that's a word that's going to encourage you there's a word that's going to lift you up and there's a word that the lord has in store for each one of you as well today You know the word that uh, I've been asked to speak about to each and every one of us today is the fifth word that Jesus cried from the cross when he said I am thirsty. Jesus said I am thirsty. Let, let's start off with the scripture, right? A very familiar passage that we often look at when it comes to Good Friday in John chapter 19 verse 28 later knowing that everything now had been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled Jesus said I am thirsty Jesus said I am thirsty now I want you to understand that the highlight of this verse is so that scripture would be fulfilled you know a different translation says so that the word of god will come to pass so that the promises of god the prophecies will come to pass so in order for that to happen jesus said i am thirsty i thirst think about this 
Jesus was in a very bad shape when you think about how physically drained he was, how emotionally drained he was, how mentally drained he was. In fact, he was spiritually drained because the sin of the whole world was upon his shoulder. He was in the moment when he was so tired and exhausted, gone through betrayal and hurt, gone through so much of negativity, so much of abandonment and so much of turmoil all over and confusion all over and, and, and so much of shame and everything upon the cross. And even in spite of all of that stuff, he was able to remember the scripture, the prophecy, the promise and to stick to the fulfillment of the prophecy. Think about it. What I want you to understand here is this was actually the fulfillment of a prophecy mentioned in Psalm 22 verse 15 uh, where it is prophesied about the Messiah saying, My mouth is dried up like a pot shed and my tongue sticks out to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of dirt, dust of death, sorry. So it was a prophecy in Psalm 22 verse 15 and Jesus in order to fulfill that prophecy, said, I am thirsty. Now, I want you to just think about this for a moment, guys. This is so important. Jesus was in one of those hardest of moments and darkest of seasons, and yet he was committed to do the will of him who sent him. Today, I want you to understand the same way Jesus was determined to be in alignment with God's will, in alignment to fulfill God's prophecy, in alignment to fulfill God's plan and will and purpose, in spite of the fact that he was in a very bad shape or a dark season, I want to ask you, each one of you under the sound of my voice, you have a purpose. Like Jesus had an assignment, you have an assignment. Like Jesus had a purpose, you have a purpose. You're not here by accident. You're not here because your parents decided to get together. You're here by the plan of God. You're here by the purpose of God. And today, I want you to understand this under the sound of my voice, that you're not listening just because it's Good Friday, but you are listening by the plan of God to tell you that He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. And what God has ordained for your life is still going to come to pass. So today, will you make that commitment to do what God has called you to do? Will you make that commitment to walk in His call and His purpose and His will over your life? Now think about this. Even when you think about Jesus, right? He said in John 12, 27, for this purpose I have come. In John 18, 37, he said, For this I've been born. For this I came into the world. Jesus knew what was his this. He knew his purpose. He knew his assignment. He did not allow the things of the world to distract him and deviate him and uh, make him go off track. He was determined to do the will of God, the will of him who sent him. Today, I want to ask you this question, dear saints of God. Uh, do you know what is your this? Do you know why you're here? Do you know what's your purpose? Do you know why? God has brought you. Do you know your assignment? Jesus knew what was his assignment. Do you know what is your assignment? See, a lot of people today, a lot of people today are living their life from a place of whatever happens, let it happen. Just go with the flow. No aim in life, no vision in life, no purpose in life. Just go with the flow. They just start off, just want to finish some random course. They just want to get some marks. They just want to get a job. They want to get settled. They want to get married. They want to just uh, plan about their retirement. That's all they're looking at. But the Bible says, if you look at the message version in Ephesians 5, 17, don't live carelessly or unthinkingly. Make sure you understand what the master wants. Today, I want to challenge the same to each one of you under the sound of my voice. Don't live carelessly. Don't live unthinkingly. You know, if Jesus was unthinking, he wouldn't have thought about fulfilling prophecy when he was in the darkest season of his life. Today, I challenge you, just like Jesus made that commitment, even before he got into the cross, he made the commitment in Luke 22, 42, Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me, but not my will, but let your will be done. Today, I want to challenge each one of you, even before you step into the dark season, because every one of us go through dark seasons. We all go through seasons of questions. We go through seasons of testing. We go through the cloud. We go through the storm. We go through the mountains and we go through every 
fiery challenge in our life. But I want to tell you, before you get into it, make it your commitment to say, God, I commit to do your will. Not my will, God, but let your will be done. See, the key to stay committed to God's will on the cross, on the, uh, in the most challenging moments, is to make the commitment before the challenge begins. See, Jesus didn't say, let your will be done on the cross. He said that even before the drama began. <laughs> what I want you to understand is, while you are still here, while things are still okay, make it your commitment and say, God, not my will, but let your will be done. I commit to your will. I commit to your plan. That's exactly what Jesus committed. In that moment, he said, not my will, but let your will be done. And that is how when things were beyond his control, when things were really hard, he was still able to think of and stand by to fulfill the purpose, to fulfill the prophecy, to fulfill the plan of God in that season. Today, I want you to understand that when you're climbing to the top of Mount Everest, they always say, make all the major decisions while you're still in the ground or in base camp or in the lower altitude. Because when you get to the top, things are so hard, things are so uh, so difficult that you, you, you lose it. So you can't make major decisions on when you're in the death zone because your entire body begins to die. Same way, before you get into that season of going through the tough time, I challenge you, make that commitment. I'm going to fulfill the plan of God. I'm going to fulfill the prophecies concerning me. The same way that Jesus had a plan and a purpose and an assignment, you have. And I make sure that I, and I want to can challenge you to make it your commitment that you will fulfill them. Because if you are going unthinkingly, it's like saying, I'll just go to the airport and take any plane that comes. No, you will choose the plane that will take you to the destination that you desire. If you are so careful in choosing the right plane, the right bus, the right train, how much more careful you need to be to say, I'm going to choose the will of God. I'm going to choose the plan of God and I'm going to commit to that. Now, one more thing I want you to understand is, he makes the commitment and he went on the cross, right? He could have run out of it. He could have called angels to come and take him out of it, but he stuck to it. He made that. But what's interesting is, as I told you in Psalm 22, 15, it talks about his thirst being prophesied. It also says in Psalm 22, 18, that they divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments, which was another prophecy that was fulfilled uh, in John 19, 23, when the Roman soldiers were actually uh, casting lots for Jesus' garments. You see something here, guys. When you think about thirst, it's not a voluntary action. Like, for example, I volunteer to come and speak. It's in my control. But thirst is something that's beyond my control. I feel thirsty because I'm speaking. It's not something I can control, right? Even an involuntary action still aligned with the fulfillment of God's call because he committed to God's call. Today, I want you to understand, likewise, Jesus being on the cross was his voluntary action. But even the Roman soldiers who were beyond Jesus' control, because Jesus was working as a man here, right? Think about it. Even their actions aligned with the fulfillment of God's prophecy, fulfillment of God's plan over Jesus' life. Which means that when you say yes to God, even the people who are beyond your control, even the things that are beyond your control, the things that are involuntary, which is not in your hand, will still fall into the plan of God, will still fall into the fulfillment of God's prophecy when you come into it. That's what I want you to understand. That's the word I want to challenge you. You know, the Bible says in Philippians 1 verse 20, I trust that my life will bring honor to God, to Christ, whether I live or die. I trust that I give honor to God with my life. Different translations talk about it in different ways. But in living and in dying, I give glory to God. You see, dying is something is not in my hands. But even in your death, you can still glorify God. You can still honor God. Even in the things that are beyond your control, 
you can still see that God is in control when you say yes to God's call over your life. Think about it. That's the word I want to challenge you. This is the word I want to challenge you. That if you would say yes to God's call, if you would say yes to God's plan and purpose, God is so beautiful in making everything, whether the things which are voluntary, which are within your control, and the things which are not in your control, like uh, something like thirst or other people's decisions, even those will align with God's call and God's will and God's plan when you say yes to God's call, when you say yes to God's will. I just want to give you close with this one important thing. You may feel like your life makes no sense. You may feel like everything is going away from what you planned and orchestrated over your life. And you're saying it seems like a contradiction. John, I don't know. I know this is the promise of God, but look at my life. You know, and I was just thinking, the one who spoke the worlds into existence, the one who created including the water bodies on the cross, he said, I thirst. You know, it seems like a contradiction. You know, I go for swimming every day and the irony that I see is when you go for swimming, just like any other physical activity, it leads to dehydration. And it's, it's, it's really uh, mind-boggling in my brain, okay? When I think about that, all around me is water. I'm surrounded by water, but within me, I'm depleted of water. Water is running all around me, but within me, water is running out. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like an irony. And your life may seem like that. Jesus, who created water, ran out of water for you and for me to show that sometimes your life may seem like a contradiction to what God has prom promised, has planned, what he has shown you. But if you would still hold on, if you would still believe, if you would still trust the Lord, I want to believe, decree and declare that the same way that the one who was resurrection and the life died, but yet he rose again on the third day. The one who was the water of life. He said, if you drink of my water, you will thirst no more. That same God cries saying, I'm thirsty. It seemed like a contradiction, but God rose him back to life to give us that water of life. Today, I want to decree and declare over each one of you. Even if your life seems like a contradiction, you may be in the midst of a good Friday. Your resurrection Sunday is coming. God is about to turn the tables around. He's about to shift people across. He's about to connect the dots and he's going to take you to the final destination that he has for you. I pray that this word would be a blessing to you. And I pray that uh, I want to also, Lord, I release this word of over each and every person watching, listening, that it will encourage them and challenge them to step into their purpose, step into their calling, step into what you have ordained for them. In the name of Jesus, I pray and bless this ministry that it will come forth with great flowers to give you the glory, honor and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. What a joy, privilege and honor it was for us to be having meditated on the fifth word on the cross. And also it was an honor for us to be having ministered by Brother John. Thank you so much, Brother. In spite of your busy schedules, you are here with us this evening. On behalf of our Christ ministry, myself and my family, I would like to thank you for being with us this evening and also to share the word for the fifth word on the cross. Dear friends, as we move on to the next word, the sixth word on the cross, let us meditate on it. Dear friends, as we come here to the sixth word on the cross, the word of victory, it is finished. And rightly said so, it is finished. And even the worship service is also going to be over. It is also going to be finished soon. And there will be a relief in most of our faces to be seen. It is finished. It's written in the Gospel according to John, chapter 19, verses 30. 
which says in the gospel of john which says the moment of jesus death is connected with the words it is finished it is finished is a very significant word for us in greek it is actually just one word titilista which means it is finished the same word is also used in the gospel according to john chapter 19 verses 28 which says when the writer says after this jesus knowing that all was now finished he knew that it was finished but finished is a very strange word in the english literature or language now today as we see this long two and a half hours of service two and a half hours of time of meditation as we are conducting here at for christ ministry many of us would be thinking that how long am i going to speak how long will the other pastors or the preachers will speak how long am i going to speak now when we see this i'll just give you one answer that i'll be here to share just for 10 to 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes time where i'll be sharing even some of us cannot last for so much minutes in one place now viewers who are watching online you will either off the tv or the phone and go away and do your work or leave it on and go do your work most of us cannot sit at that point of time then when we realize the cruel full pain the suffering of our lord and savior jesus christ for the 3 hours which he hung hung on the cross of calvary he spent in weakness which is not to be compared when we see those hours where jesus was hanging on the cross in brutal pain is not to be compared of us who are sitting here in our comfort zones listening to the word who are sitting in different churches listening to the word of the preacher we are sitting in our comfort zone but our lord and savior jesus christ was hung on the cross in pain in suffering which is not to be compared but sometimes we come to a thinking on the sixth word when we say it is finished we come to an end of a conclusion saying that it's just some more you know in a half an hour or an hour to get it done the service is over we'll see like that and i do agree that sometimes it happens but when jesus says it is finished he does not mean that it is nearly over nor does he mean that the time is up but he means that it is completed or it is accomplished i would like to again repeat this when jesus says that it is finished he doesn't mean that he is it is nearly over nor does he mean that it is uh, the time is up but what he means is it is completed or it is accomplished the other word in the english language which is a great confusion is the word the end when we see the word the end we often see the word after a movie when we see the end after a movie but there is a lot of difference in between these words the end means end of something that's what the word means 
in earlier in john's gospel when the writer says having loved his own who were in this world loved them to the end this is what God, the john's gospel says the greek word here is telos from which we get the word theology we get the word theology in english in english it means he loved them right through till the purpose of his mission was accomplished was completely fulfilled he was sent here for a mission which was completely fulfilled there is a writer for a common prayer book thomas cramer when completing the book of common prayer was a great fan of devils in his writing he wrote once in the morning and in the introduction of morning and evening prayers since and wickedness disable not clock errored and stayed devices and deceive but when he comes to the heart of the gospel the finished word of christ on the cross he uses his only tip when he writes on the one full perfect and sacrifice sufficient obligation and sacrifice for the sins of the whole world i am quote every single one of these words are worth meaning and meditating on this good friday all of this means that the cry it is finished is not a cry of despair nor it's a cry of hopelessness but it is a cry of victory jesus has completed his death the task the father has sent him to do achieving the salvation of the world world he has remained obedient and even the death on the cross he was he has stayed to his father's will to the very end even when he was tempted otherwise he was he he took all of our sins on himself and uh, on the cross offering himself as the greatest sacrifice for every one of us no longer do we need to sacrifice animals or things when we commit a sin like the old uh, the uh, like the jewish people in the old testament it did isaac was put like this in his one of his brilliant hymns and i quote from the hymn to para not all the blood of beasts on jewish altars slain could give the guilty consent erase or wash away its sin but christ the heavenly lamb takes all our sins away a sacrifice of a noble lamb and richer blood than day it is a combined him which we see two paras which means a lot right now christ died on the cross for each of our sins christ died for us taking the entire sin of every one of us on himself and he was crucified that day it is finished is a great good friday victory cry all is accomplished all is completed his will his work of salvation is done there is no possible outcome other than the resurrection may god bless you and may this blessing this word be a blessing to many and take it out the word of victory it 
it is finished is not a word of over but is a word of victory god bless each one of you and amen dear friends as we come here in a time to the last statement that our lord and savior jesus christ uttered on the cross i would like to introduce and welcome the preacher for the seventh word on the cross the word of contentment father into your hands i commend my spirit it is my indeed privilege and honor to have sister pooja meena evangelist and lecturer at goodwills girls pu college bangalore sister along with teaching also shares the word in different ministries and also great support to the church and never misses a chance to share the word sister in spite of your busy schedules you are here with us this evening on behalf of for christ ministry myself and my family i would like to welcome you and i request you to kindly share the seventh word on the cross the word of commitment hello everyone i'm pooja and i'm grateful for the opportunity to speak in brother nikhil solomon george channel representing for christ ministry as we approach good friday i'm honored to speak with you today now it is very common for us to speak about the seven sayings of jesus christ and to meditate upon it out of the seven sayings that jesus christ had spoken three were directed towards the father and the other four statements were to all kinds of people for example the first one father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing was spoken to the father statement 2 is towards the good thief where he says you will be with me in paradise and to mary he says uh showing to john that woman behold your son and again to god he says my god my god why have you forsaken me he says to all i thirst and to the world he says it is finished and finally towards the end he says to god father into your hands i commit my spirit what does it mean when jesus christ says father into your hands i commit my spirit what does that has to do with us and how a believer can use the very similar statement uh, telling to the lord that father i commit my spirit we are going to see this in the next few minutes at the very end of jesus life as jesus christ hung on the cross as the sun was darkened and as the veil torn down in the temple jesus christ called out with a very loud voice saying father into your hands i commit my spirit now this we see in the book of luke chapter 23 verse 46 of note is the fact that When Jesus Christ says into your hands I commit my spirit he was actually quoting a scripture from Psalms chapter 31 verse 5 to be exact Psalms chapter 31 is a David Psalms and David during a very distressful time of his life when he was facing too many trials and as he f- and, and as he felt the walls were closing in on him he felt hopeless and he felt the overwhelming darkness upon his soul it is that time when david uses a very similar words to that of jesus christ when he says in psalms into your hands i commit my spirit deliver me lord my faithful god Now Jesus Christ exact words from the cross were not fully didactic meaning it was not a drama played now we know that Jesus Christ he knew the scriptures well uh, many times whenever he was tackling with temptation with trials even against satan he always quoted scriptures from the old testament now you must have thought okay this is a drama played by jesus christ and he is telling uh, to people around him so that in the future we can tell that the scriptures were fulfilled and the scriptures were fulfilled no it was not like that whenever jesus christ used 
certain scriptures referring from the Old Testament, they were not didactic, they were not by hearted, they were not told simply because it has to be told during this time I'll have to tell that, during the next time I may have to use this, no, it was not like that. Whatever Jesus Christ told, let it be the reference even from the Old Testament, he always spoke true to its essence, he spoke from the feelings of his heart and it was not hypocritic at all. Was Jesus Christ the only person who told, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit? Do you think? No, it is not. There were many people, even after the death of Jesus Christ, that many used this very verse, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, at the very end of their life. For example, in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 7, verse 59, Stephen is the first Christian who is martyred. And Stephen, when he was martyred, he uses a very similar words to that of the Jesus Christ. He says, Lord Jesus Christ, receive my spirit. Now saying, Lord, Father, I commit my spirit into your hands and to that of Stephen saying, Jesus Christ, to receive my spirit, they all mean the same. Who were the other person who used the very similar words? Uh, they were apostolic fathers, the first bishops during a Christian uh, realm. It was Polycarp who used Jan Hus, who was a reformationist. He also used the same similar words. And the most famous Martin Luther, a Protestant reformationist, he too used the very similar words at the end of his life. When they breathed their last, they uttered these words saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, do we have to commit our spirit only when we are giving uh, our life away or when we are nearing the death? Should we only use then? No, it is not like that. We use this uh, statement of Father, I commit my spirit into your hands during our everyday life, during our day-to-day -day, uh, decision making, into our day-to-day -day making of choices. We see Jesus Christ doing the same. He not only told Father, I give my spirit to you at the end of his life, though he was overwhelmed with darkness and the death pangs were upon him and he felt uh, rejection and betrayal from every side, especially from the disciples whom he loved the most. And that is when he, f he felt, he also says, right, in Gethsemane saying that, uh, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. That means what? His soul is troubled. He is anxious. He is man of man and he also is God of God. But when he was man, he suffered a lot and he felt that sense of hopelessness. We too, many times when we have too many difficult uh, things going on in our life, our hardships and everything make us feel that we are lost, we are helpless, we feel the wall walls closing in upon us, we feel distressed when we are faced with a critical health issues, a financial instability and we feel our souls being troubled, our spirit crying out to God and we, we feel that's all, that's the end. But Jesus Christ tells us a sure assurance. He tells that you don't have to worry. Jesus Christ tells us that when I myself committed my spirit to the Father, you can do too. Now, Jesus Christ shows us how valuable our spirit is. It is natural for us to always keep all the precious things, gold, jewelry, everything into a safe vault. We give so much safety to our most precious thing. Likewise, Jesus Christ is trying to show us that your spirit is more valuable than anything compared to the world because it is the spirit that has come from God into you that is dwelling inside of you. Now the only safe place for your spirit is in Father's hand. So Jesus Christ is trying to tell us that commit your spirit into Father's hand and you don't have to be anxious. You don't have to feel shaken up in your life. Jesus Christ also tells 
is that nothing can snatch us from father's hand in john chapter 10 verse 29 jesus christ teaches the believers that my father who has given them to me is greater than all no one can snatch them out of my father's hand so once you commit your spirit into father's hand there is no one person on earth who can snatch you away from father's hand does that not give you a joy in life that does not give you a safe assurance you don't have to be afraid anymore if anything at all that you would like to learn from these seven sayings of Jesus Christ you can learn from the seventh saying that whenever your soul spirit feels troubled you can commit your spirit into father's hand and he will take care of you this will give you a sense of contentment, a deep satisfaction in your souls. You don't have to worry anymore. Whenever you feel troubled, you just have to say, Father, I commit my spirit into your hands. I thank once again uh, uh, Nikhil Solomon George for giving me this opportunity. I'm so very happy to share all this with you. Thank you. What a joy, privilege and honor it was for us to be having meditated on the seventh word on the cross and also to be led by Sister Pooja Meena. Thank you so much, Sister, for being with us this evening. In spite of your busy schedules, you have accepted our invitation, which was extended from For Christ Ministry, and you are here with us this evening. On behalf of For Christ Ministry, myself and my family, I would like to thank you so much for being with us this evening and also to share the word on the seventh word on the cross. Dear friends, we have come across the seven words, seven final statements of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was uttered on that day where he was crucified. These many hours where he suffered on the cross for our sins, to take away all our sins on him so that we should not give a sacrifice in the future whenever we sin. He is the biggest sacrifice for us, a heavenly lamb who sacrificed his life for us. Dear friends, as we come to the special performance of a wonderful person who was long waiting for this performance, dear friends, it is my indeed privilege and honor for me to introduce and welcome Sister Sharon from Chennai. She's a gospel singer. Sister Sharon is a gospel singer and a Carnatic vocalist from Chennai. She has completed seven grades in Carnatic, Carnatic music and also is currently learning Hindustani music and completed two grades. Sister has also worked with many music, Christian music directors, Christian pastors to publish many songs and she has also won many title award winners in singing competitions in, and TV shows. Dear friends, young girl who is blessed with God's voice, God's chosest voice and she is being a blessing in sharing the word through music, to, through singing. And it is such a joy, privilege and honor for us to have Sister Sharon with us this evening, joining us from Chennai. On behalf of For Christ Ministry, myself and my family, I'd like to welcome you, Sister. And I request you to kindly share your music. And dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I would like to make this announcement that Sister Sharon will be sharing her performance in Tamil. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Now I am Sharon Malina Pesra. Kalvari Anbai Yenni Rum Vele. In the Padalo over Vati Keku Modo, Andavar Namakaga Silvela Marita and the Kachida Nyabukitver. In the Padal Yenak Pasna Rumba touching Arka. Get some Yet this I am the 
Sister Sharon, thank you so much, Sister, for your wonderful voice that you have been blessed with. May God continue to use you for His glory, and God bless you as you do for His will. And all the very best for your future endeavors. On behalf of Four Christ Ministry, myself and my family, I would like to thank you so much, Sister, for being with us this evening. Dear friends, as the time comes, as we come into a time of meditation for the word of God, for this Good Friday, for the theme, the crucifixion of Jesus and his death at Calvary. Dear friends, let us now sing this Kannada song, Kannada prayer song, Atma Swarupne, Priya Atma Swarupne, Sinai Betadali, Iliduba Deva. Let us sing this Kannada song and prepare ourselves to listen to the word of God and for the meditation. Nothing to be compared of because that great gift is so powerful that you took the sins from us. And even as we started the Good Friday worship, you enabled all seven of us preachers to share your word and also the three musicians. You enable to share the word either through music or through the gospel. We thank you. And also, as I share your word, may the Spirit speak to me so that I can speak to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I bring greetings on behalf of For Christ Ministry, myself and my family. What a joy, privilege and honor it is for us to be here this evening to come together in fellowship, in un unity, to celebrate the death and the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross. But the death is not stoppable. Because he rose up again on, after three days, that is on Easter. Now, as we all know, the theme for today's video is the crucifixion of Jesus and his death and Calvary. Now, the title for this word of God is the significance of Good Friday and it is the understanding the significance of Christ. We are going to be in a detailed summary. A summary. It will take about 10 to 15 minutes. Good Friday always marks the moment when Jesus shed his blood and made peace between God and sinful human humanity. Bridging the gap caused by sin and offering us the great gift of eternal life to all those who believe. When people sinned, it was divided. God's love, God and the human were divided. But Christ came in between to save us. Dear congregation members, as we gather here today celebrating the Good Friday, and also to meditate on the word of God and also the seven words on the cross. We are reminded of the profound significance of Good Friday. It is a day that marks the beginning of Jesus Christ's earthly ministry and leading to his sacrificial death on the cross. On this solemn occasion, let us uh, come into a time of meditation and it is from different passages from the parts of the Bible, which is related to Good Friday. Due to lack of time, I will not be reading out the scriptures, but it will be displayed on the screen. You can go through it. I'll be directly referring the verse and going into the explanation. The first one as we look on is the gospel according to John chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. Uh, I will be referring to the NIV version which is displayed on your screens. The verses <clears throat> see that the essence of Good Friday that is the uncomparable 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 love of God for us. It is demonstrated through the sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ. God's love for humanity was so great that he was willing to sacrifice his son for us. Good Friday marks the significance that God's redemption, the plan of God for humanity, a plan which is rooted in love, grace and mercy. As we see this passage, God's unconditional love for each one of us, even though we are sinners, He sent his only son, Jesus, to be a part here in this earth and to die on the cross after his ministry. As we read out in the next portion of the scripture, in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5, we see that Isaiah has prophesied about the suffering and sacrificial death of the Messiah, 
centuries before Jesus was even born. Before Jesus was born, Isaiah has prophesied that there is this Messiah who is going to suffer and die on the cross. And on Good Friday, it fulfills this prophecy as Jesus, the Lamb of God, willingly took all our sins and died on the cross for us. The ultimate act where God sent his only son for us that he took all our sins and died on the cross on that day. His crucifixion was not a tragedy or not an event, but his ultimate act securing forgiveness, peace and healing for all those who believe in him. As we believe him, he took all our sins away. As we come to the next uh, scripture, Romans chapter 5 verses 8. As we see in the scripture that Good Friday, we see the uncomparable, the depth of God's love for humanity. That Jesus was willingly came down and died on the cross. Not because we deserved it, but out of his immeasurable love and grace he gave us. His sacrifice serves as a powerful reminder of the lengths to which God was willing to give us himself. Here we see that God himself want, had so much love for us that he made his own son to be a sacrifice for us, stopping all the sacrificial death. As we even meditated on the sixth word, God died on the cross, taking all of our sins. Because as we sin, we know that he saved us. He saved us. And like the Old Testament, we do not need to give sacrifice, animal sacrifice or anything as such. As we come to the final reading in Colossians chapter 1 verses 19 and 20 as we see on the face of it uh, on the face of it it would seem like reconciling all things is effective towards all things but then Paul continues in his book in chapter 20 uh, sorry in verse 22 and 23 as we continue but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through that to be present you holy in his sight without anything and free from accusation if you continue in your faith if you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. Dear friends, as Christians, whatever is the matter it is, died, died on the cross. Christ died on the cross for our sins. He rose up again on the third very day. And at this time, as we see, we are not supposed to move here and there, but our faith should be strong. Our belief should be strong and firm like a pillar. That's what he means. And here it seems like there is a case where some are not reconciled. That is, those who do not continue in faith, but who move from the hope of the gospel. Assuming that Paul is not considering himself in the span of a couple of verses. He, how can we reconcile these two sets of verses is the question. 
how did paul understand the effectiveness of god's reconciling all things in christ dear friends as christians our faith should be in one we should not move our faith from there to here or here to there but always stand strong because our god died on the cross for our sins he rose up again on the third day and he stood forward and he completed his task that he was been sent here down by his father and that's how good friday marks a significant role as christian as christians in the society do not be afraid of sharing the gospel to others but be firm in sharing the gospel because we are here to share the gospel our main purpose for us to be here is to share the gospel but many people misunderstand that i would like to once again say this share the gospel be strong enough because when you share the gospel remember that the holy spirit will be guarding you and the holy spirit will guide you to speak to the next person many of the people think that gospel is shared only by the pastors preachers evangelists reverend but i am sorry it is wrong the word of god is open for all it can be shared by anyone it can be shared by anyone Dear friends, do not be afraid of sharing the gospel. Share the gospel. If you if you are an engineer or a doctor, student, share it with your friends, colleagues. Share your personal testimonies that changed your life and you took Christ as your personal savior. And as we reflect on the significance of Good Friday, let us never forget. the immeasurable sacrifice of jesus on the cross his death was not in vain but it is a new covenant of of grace and re- reconciliation may we embark the love of god demonstrated on good friday and live in gratitude for the salvation made possible through the sacrifice of jesus christ may this word be a blessing to each one of you watching this may you share the love of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god may you all share we are all sinners but still christ came down and sacrificed his life taking our sins away may this word be a blessing to each other and have a blessed good friday 2024 may god bless each one of you thank you and amen dear friends as we come to a time of an official announcement which should be made it is my indeed privileged honor and joy for me to uh, to tell you that we are launching our official facebook ministry page uh, the ministry account from in facebook will be launched soon after the live streaming of this good friday worship service and i request you to kindly check out the page the links are in the description and also the links will be sent to each one of you personally and you can get in contact with me uh, soon after the live streaming so that i can share the link and also you can go to the search page and type for christ ministry and you will see the channel symbol it will soon the first post will be soon uploaded soon after this uh, good friday video uh, the good friday live streaming is over on behalf of for christ ministry myself and my family i would like to request each one of you to kindly share your support by following us by sharing it to your friends and also by recommending our ministry to others and we are opening first from youtube to instagram and in from instagram to facebook now and we are expecting our family to grow in and around the social media backgrounds thank you so much request your 
support and prayers for us. Dear friends, as we come to the oath of thanks, the last stage of this. Dear friends, I would like to thank so many of you who have pitched in and uh, worked at the background scenes. Firstly, I would like to thank God Almighty for His guidance for me personally in sharing the word and also to select the preachers and also for all the uh, needed support which I need to have. Secondly, I would like to thank my family members who have been on real support from the background. And also, I would like to thank all the preachers and I would like to read them once again. Mrs. Elizabeth Welfare, Evangelist. Mrs. Mercy John Peter, Secretary of the Women's Fellowship, Karnataka Central Diocese, Church of South India and teacher at Bishop Cotton Girls School, Bangalore. Mrs. Davin Elena, Fellowship Ministerial Assistant, Karnataka Central Diocese, Church of South India and teacher at Bishop Cotton Boys School, Bangalore, Brother Isaac Mark, Evangelist and Founder of Decode Ministries, Brother John Griff, Evangelist, Author and President of John Griff International, Sister Pooja Mina, Evangelist and Lecturer at Goodwins Girls PU College, Bangalore. I would like to also thank all the musicians and singers who have pitched in today. The Bishop Cotton Boys School Music Department from Bangalore, all the eight members who are here with us this evening, the Samuel Brothers team from Chennai, three brothers, and Sister Sharon from Chennai, the gospel singer. And uh, it is always a joy for you all to be here this evening. On behalf of Fort Christ Ministry, myself and my family, I'd like to thank each one of you uh, for being with us this evening. And not to miss out, I have my two really clo close friends uh, who I'll not be mentioning, but I would like to thank them, those two close friends who have been a really great support in my ministry and also have, have helped in my ministry in a lot of ways and for their prayers. Thank you so much for being there in each situation. Dear friends, as we come to the end of the time where we are seeing a time, it went so quickly. We just started with the, uh, the editing and also we just started off with the Time where we had to select the preachers or think about Good Friday is going to come, going to come. But finally, Good Friday is over and we are indeed privileged and honor that the Good Friday 2024 worship service has come to a successful uh, fruition of this ministry and it's all glory to God Almighty for sharing the word on behalf of our Christ ministry. Myself and my family, I would like to thank each one of you for being with us this evening and consistently for being with us this evening, the couple of hours of meditation. Do comment your views on this video and also do comment on my personal number or Instagram ID. As we remember the crucifixion of Jesus on this Good Friday, may we all remember to follow his teachings of love compassion and forgiveness. Wishing each one of you a blessed day. God bless each one of you and in the years to come. May the cross symbolize us. May the cross bless each one of you and may this Good Friday be a blessing to each one of us. God bless and Amen. Amen.